Welcome to this little series of uh, videos about the um, editor applications I have promised. I'm trying to show you a little bit um, what you can expect if you work later on with the game engine, especially with the tools that accompany it. The basic idea here is that uh, this is an integrated game development environment, so you have everything in one place with different editors helping you to make your projects. Um, except external tools like Blender or uh, um, image tools or sound tools. I don't want to duplicate those into the editor. It's more like gluing things together. So um, first I'm starting with the world editor. It's a very common central part of the entire application. And uh, let's have a look at, for example, this one here. So in general you get uh, like it's common today for most editors, uh, VZVIC interface where you can directly interact with the world you're creating and see the results in real time. So, let's load it quickly. Uh, when you start out, you start out with a full, full, um, full bright view, which you can obviously directly deactivate to get your world. So, so if you're in here with typical way to interact and edit your stuff, so you can select stuff, you can move them around and so forth. The editing is made in a more cat way, so you select what you do, you have a select mode, the move mode, the scale mode and what objects you operate, so it doesn't use this do everything in one edit mode like you might find in others, simply because it... Okay, so in general how is it built? You have um, the main selection panel, which simply corresponds to the object you've currently selected, or multiple objects, in which case you can switch between the object that is active uh, to edit the properties. Then you have different object types you can edit. The normal object mode is just everything that you put into the world, uh, from dynamic objects until static objects, so it's really more or less everything uh, and especially the properties. The system is built on a property system like you might know from Source Engine or similar because it's the most flexible system. You just get a list of properties with their values and the scripts know what to do with them. Then in these objects you have for example like I mentioned uh, the textures here uh, one special point about my engine is that you can replace all textures in life. So you have, for an object for example, you could directly replace the texture it has. For example, you can define a skin and for this skin you select, for example, a replacement like this one here. As you can see, your skin is there to replace. And you can do this with everything, so not just an entire skin, you can also just replace individual parts of it. Let's take this guy here. I can go and say um, I replace the wings. For example, again with this one here. And it just replaces this single texture. So for example I can take one skin and clone it to an entire set of objects, for example. Uh, that's the wrong way around. So, setting the active to this one here, that's this one, because active is copied to the rest. For lights, you get also such a um, tool, which simply mm, takes certain values, property values, and provides them with a more useful interface. Uh, you can also directly preview the changes in different time conditions, so I can select a different sky, night for example, so we are here at night, and I can use a trigger table to change how certain objects look like to simulate in-game scenes. For example, I've got a trigger for night time, and if this one is fired, different light sources uh, switch to night mode for example. That's just this trigger you see here. So you can easily test different 
game situations using uh, this little um, load and save to files to quickly test. And then you see also how this can directly be used to alter the different parameters uh, of the light source which directly alters this. So you've got there quite a lot of possibilities to work with. Quite simple to do and easy to copy also properties from one to the other. So clone properties wrong way, this way. So one thing I missed uh, the browser tool. Browser tool allows you, for example, to apply skins directly to an object. Zack. This sets it to the active texture. That's the one that is selected here from this list. And of course, you can also go and say, yes, I want to apply it to a specific texture, for example, and so forth. With various modes to work with, some convenience modes, like for example, I can select multiple objects here, and it rotates about the selected one, like that, or rather only in this direction. So I can also rotate them about themselves. So Adding objects is also nice. Let's pick something, for example, a bed. Let's put a bed on the streets, why not? So, let's see, we've got a bed here. It aligns directly to the ground, so I could also place a layer one here. If it... Ah, I clicked back there. Tough luck. Okay, that's better. Or let's put it on the lamps. Well, not very useful, but you can do it or I can place it in front of me instead of linked to the surface. So, yeah. Selecting, you have also a um, variable selection mode, so I can box select and use the wheel to adjust how deep the selection goes. So, can easily choose how much I want to select of the world just by adjusting the box while I'm doing the selection. Show occlusion mesh is also nice. This will show you all the occlusion mesh meshes that are attached to your objects. This is a lot of things is automatic. So the game defini definition file, for example, says an object has uh, this model, this skin, this occlusion mesh, and so forth. And uh, so there's a lot of objects attached directly to an object class without you having to manually set them. But of course, you could go and say. Um, I want to override occlusion mesh and so forth. So I could also show directly how work with objects. One way is to directly apply them. Or you can create them a little bit for yourself. The prop contains a little bit a generic run. With generic prop you can more or less just place anything in the world. Let's place it a little bit in front of our nose and you can then for example assign it a new model let's say this guy here then give it a skin let's say this one what do you have here so. and you've got already your model in the game. Nothing special to do. And you could easily modify everything on the skins like mentioned before. Like saying, uh, what do we take? Let's say this one here. And let's say it's a material oh my cleaser <laughs> let's see how this looks like now which guy is it i have lost track ah it's the feet ah okay you see it Beep. 
and modify the transforms so easily adjust everything to your liking let's say what we've got what we've got what's funny what's funny um Oh god, what do we take? Fence? Let's see if this works. Um, 10, 10. Oh, looks funny. Ha. A little bit more. Tick, tick. Let's fence this guy. Well, uh, not much to say about decals. They work like you expect it from decals. You can push them around and so forth. And obviously, you can also edit them like everything else. Uh, adding works here also the same way like everything else select which decal you want let's say a graffiti that one is nice Pif. and it has an influence area that's actually just a texture property which defines a shape the editor knows that's what is able to work with shapes so if I edit this I end up in the object shape mode and I could edit this shape directly. I can create shapes, have multiple shapes and that's useful uh, for example if you want to extend the possibilities of your in-game object classes with for example trigger zones or uh, shapes having a special function so you can use this ability of the editor to let you edit shapes which are actually just properties and allow your game scripts to do something funny with these scripts. In here you see that we've got this navigation space, this blue thing. And in addition, we've got also a little helper for you to get an idea how this would work like. So let's see, we have an object for 16. Let's put for 16. And let's say we want to go to this box here. For 16. That's not a box. 0 0.5. Um, tuck, 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 tuck. Let's take this as, as our goal. Okay. And since we are working with a mesh, we get now a solution. And we can see if our navigation meshes are working out as expected. Check. Here we see, yeah, so we can quickly test how this works. And also with different um, weight functions uh, for different parts of the mesh. But for this better look into the wiki which contains a large article on navigation spaces. It works more or less uh, with a height image system, visibility and so forth. I can use different materials and skins to apply and of course the typical uh, painting solutions uh, where have you got it for example height paint then could say uh, let's make a little bigger radius and so make the strength a little bit higher the typical stuff you all know huh? so And a, fa a couple of tools, so you have low rays, you can lower, uh, you can level them. So, or smooth it out. Let's make a little more strength, smoothing it out, and so forth. A couple of typical operations you would expect. Uh, you've got also mask painting, visibility painting. Visibility, for example, would uh, define where something is visible or invisible, so you could make holes in all this. And make it visible again. Uh, that's it. So, a couple of things you might be useful for. Also the mask painting, that's obviously what you would expect. Selecting 
for example, uh, grass and painting it a little bit across. As you've seen, the one that is later has more preference. That's normal. Physical simulation, everything is directly active in it. So I could also go and say, uh, let's rotate this one. So everything works in real. Now, about vegetation. For this, we've got the vegetation system. Might mount update. Since I've changed something up here. So, and this one allows to edit the vegetation. You can have different layers. For different layers, you can have different variations, uh, models you want to use. And you can use a such a system here to define for each layer under what conditions the prop fields are populated with this mesh. So you can use various, uh, simulate various scenarios like uh, not on slopes, near other objects, for example. You can say this grows near another object, or it doesn't grow near another object, or it's... Uh, that's the one. And I am mapping... Five. Oh, come on. Probability. Let's see how this works now. Okay. So you see they are a little bit less. Or oh, let's say we map four, then it should be a little bit more visible. As you see, no fan wants to be near a dragon. Okay. Or we could have the other way around. We want to be near it. Proximity, conversion, math, one minus this one, come on, come on, yeah, and tsk. now it should only be near him and not place. So now fan wants to be near dragon, nowhere else. <laughs> As you can see, that's, uh, that's the effect matcher for example. With Effect Matcher, I could uh, check out certain things I could do, like for example, uh, what do we say? Apply uh, night vision, desaturate. So we can also test filters applied directly on your system directly from the editor itself. So that's a little bit for the moment and in the next video I will show you another one of the editors. See you!